Dixie Duncan. She's a CPA in the Washington, D.C. area, but she's also the executive director of Wills to Africa. Over the last seven years, they have shif shipped nearly 6,000 bikes to African countries. Today, Dixie should have been in South Sudan, but I will leave it up to her to tell her story. Dixie Duncan. Okay, oh, you can definitely hear me now. Okay, so I want to thank you. So the first thing I'm going to do is tell you a joke because I know that you guys are probably like me. You had a rough night last night. I came up from Washington, and I didn't get here till about 1 o'clock, so I didn't sleep well, so I'm kind of half asleep, and I'm thinking some of you guys might be. So here's a joke that sort of signifies wills to Africa. So this whole thing is going to be brought together, so you're going to have to pay attention. It's not going to be like your college professor that might bore you. I know there's none of those here, but your college professor might bore you. I'm not going to do that. You're going to have to put some things together, so you're going to have to listen. So the joke is, why did Goofy throw the butter out the window? Nobody knows? Why? He wanted to see the butterfly. Ha, 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 ha. Well... The significance of that will come into play, but it's a very simple, simple thought given by a child because he knew butter could fly. So we're going to start with that because Willis to Africa was started um, by my son when he was 10 years old. He went to Africa. As a family, we went. Um, I'm a single mom, and I love to travel, so I drug my child to Africa. And what happened was everyone told me, are you completely crazy? You, Africa has malaria, it has dengue fever, it has everything imaginable. And I said, well, you know, I just know that this is what we should do. And the reason I knew what we should do is because it was cheap. I called, I was a CPA, and there was a fair advertised, and it was $800 to go to Africa. And I said, that can't be right. I called. I got a cheap fare to Africa. So I meant this was, that was something that was meant to be. Sometimes things in life are meant to be, and that's the way my life has been. That's the way this project has been. It's just meant to be. I'm not sure why. It's just the way life has been. So I called up. We got a fare. We went to Africa, and Wills to Africa was born. This is my son, and those are the 1,000 bikes that we collected in 2008. So... I'm going to wake you up again because I want you to remember Wills to Africa because we need money. Sudan was the topic that we talked about originally. So over here, I want you guys to say Wills. You're going to say two, and you're going to say Africa. Very simple, right? Okay. So when I point to the T-shirt doing anything, you're going to say Wills to Africa. Okay. You aren't very convincing, but we'll go ahead and go with that. Now I want you to take out your phone. Everybody's got a phone. Take out your phone. Come on. Let's go. Not much time. Take out your phone. And I want you to, yes, for real. This is not a, this is not, I didn't just do that for fun. I want you to go to April 6th. It's in your calendar. I know you know how to do it. You're more technology savvy than I am. April 6th. Everybody got April 6th? Okay. I want you to put that 2.30. And I want you to put positive energy wheels to Africa. Okay? Okay. The reason I say that is hopefully, if no other obstacles get in our way, 500 bikes will be arriving in Juba, which is the capital of South Sudan, on April 6th. And hopefully I'm going to be there. But I'm not there right now because of some issues that we've gone. But I'm going to go into the, that was the introduction to Wills to Africa. I'm going to go to history of Wills to Africa. So if you could go to the next slide. We started this project in um, 2005, uh, right here. This is uh, this lady project, this one, that one. Okay, yes, thank you. Um, when my son went to Africa, he was very uh, attached to my grandmother. 
because my, I mean my mother, rather his grandmother, because she was very sick. And in his mind, he helped her do everything because he spent about three weeks with her every year. So he was her helper. So when he went to Africa and he saw people walking, he didn't understand how they were going to get their medicine. Because in my son's life, my grandmother lived because of her medicine. His grandmother lived because of her medicine. So for him, that was a big deal. So when he went to Africa and he saw these people walking, he's like, how do they get their medicine? And then he saw them walking and walking. If any of you have ever had the privilege of going to the African continent, you can understand what the word walking and walking means. Because they don't just walk to for leisure. Their walking involves their surviving the day. They have to walk to get water. They have to walk to get food. Um, walking is what they do. So walking uh, means a lot. Walking, walking, walking. Okay, can you go to the next slide? So these are some of the pictures. When we were in Africa, we actually stopped and gave this woman our clothes because we were leaving. And she had tears in her eyes. So all we did was a simple act of giving, we, we, we gave away everything we had, but we didn't really know when we first went there why that was significant. Can you go to the next picture, please? The next picture is a young man. And if you notice this young man, does he, what, does anyone know, notice anything significant about this picture? Don't be shy, because we don't have time for shy. No shoes. Perfect. You've heard about a lot of things to get people's shoes. Here's this kid. You can see the terrain. The terrain is not uh, walking in the grass. The terrain is a very rough surface, and he has no shoes. We gave him, we didn't have any shoes, but we gave him clothes, and we tried to, we actually gave him um, a little lion, which I'm sure he didn't need, but we gave it to him that we have, we'd gotten this. But the joy in his eye was another thing that you, ju you just can't remember. There's probably, I don't know, I need you to think back a minute and think about what you've done to put joy in somebody's eye. What have you done to put joy in somebody's eye? It's a sparkle that comes. You'll see it sometimes. You probably don't see it because you're teenagers and you're not very good to your parents. You probably haven't seen it in a long time. But when you were little, some of you probably got the, when the parents looked at you, they had this sparkle in their eye. And even now, your professors will look at you and they'll see that there's this sparkle in your eye. And that's what makes this project wonderful because it gives um, sparkles in people's eyes. Keep going, please. Okay, these are just pictures of Africa. This actually happens to be, um, this lady actually uh, weaves baskets and her work has actually been in the Smithsonian. She's in uh, Botswana. Keep going. These are m more African pictures. This is Zimbabwe. Zimbabwe, they're very famous for their carving. Uh, when their dollar dropped with Mugabe, they had, that's when we were there, and it was really, the poverty was amazing. Keep going. I'm going to ramble a little bit. We're just going to look at these. These are the history. Keep going. These are just pictures of Africa. This is very ingenious. These young men were dressed up um, on the side of the road trying to make money, and it was really awesome. You had to stop and, and give them money. It was just impossible not to. If you notice this picture, again, we go to the things that are very critical in their life. Number one, the drum is pretty, pretty sad. No shoes, and the costumes are all homemade. But these people in Africa, they take every resource and put it together. So that picture sort of signifies that. Keep going, please. And this was in the Okafongo, um, a family. That's how they transport their wood, as you can see, which is pretty difficult. Keep going. Elephants, giraffes, beautiful part of the continent. Then in the next slide, you'll see that in this slide, this is a village. Well, not a village, a town. And what you notice in that town is there's no bikes. If you look at that, there's really no stores, but there's no bikes. And obviously, everybody can't afford a cars. So I think this is how my son actually got the idea of a bike, because you didn't see any bikes when you're in Africa. Keep going. So 
<clears throat> this is kind of what happened when he returned. He told me he wanted to help the woman that was walking. I didn't know what woman. I was very, you know, I'm a working mom. I'm a single mom. I'm a basketball. I'm, I could keep going. I got a real long list, but um, so I'm very busy. So I just didn't understand what he was talking about. But he came to me and he gave me his college money. He, he had to save for college. So he says, I want to get a bike to that woman in Africa. Well, you, some of you guys aren't parents yet, but when you have your 10-year-old come to you and say you're going to get a bike to Africa, you believe it. You've got to do it. It's just, you just have to. So with that, Wills to Africa was born. We started sending bikes to Africa, and as Sammy said originally, Kiko, we um, have sent nearly 6,000 bikes. This is him when he was little. That was our first bike collection. We started in um, October. His birthday was October 20th. We started advertising, and we collected 250 bikes in one day. Keep going, please. So these are just um, slides. You can go ahead. These are just slides. This is the history. He got a number of awards because he was a young man, so he got a number of awards. I guess the most important thing he got in, on the front page of the Washington Post, which was quite impressive. And then he got, you can keep going, a number of other awards. And then, so what we do is, Wills to Africa is not just to help Africa. It's to help Americans. So what we do, keep, keep going. We make all these signs. Everything we do is low budget because we don't have a budget. This is a youth volunteer organization. So we just keep making signs, keep going. These are tarps, so the kids make the signs. It's all kid-oriented. It's all youth-oriented. Keep going, please. And these are just some of the pictures. Just keep going all the way through of the collections. So while he's going through the collections, I'll just tell you how it works. We have collection sites all around the um, Virginia. You can just keep going through the Virginia, D.C., Maryland area. If you're familiar with that, there's a lot of people in the area. These are just slides. It shows the emphasis of it's children, it's youth. We get together, we try to do a good thing. Um, so we have 8 to 10 collection sites, and out of those 8 to 10 collection sites we collect once a year, we'll get between 800 to 1,000 bikes in one day. And that's all we do is a one-day collection because we don't have a budget to store the bikes. So we try to collect them and get them out of here within one month of the collection. The collection is every the second week in December, and then we try to ship them in January. With that, does anybody have any questions? Yes? How do you ship them? Okay, we, we, that's a very good question. I didn't want to say it. I'm glad you asked. Um, we ship them in a sea cargo container. As I would be standing in the ocean here, the reason I put these t-shirts up here is to signify the American continent to the African continent. We try to bridge the gap with the, ch with the bikes. It's a 40-foot container. It will, if you pack it right, you can get 500 bikes in it. And we ship them. It's, the bikes actually left Baltimore Harbor on um, February the 6th. They are in Durban, South Africa right now, and they're going to leave to go to Mombasa any day. Of course not. <laughs> of course not. Okay, so that leads me into the next question. Um, so this was the history. You can keep going. This was the history of Wills to Africa. It's how it got started. It was a young man's idea. So the community, his basketball team, his soccer team, and his mom and all of our friends have gathered together in the last seven years and have continued to collect bikes and send them to Africa. Um, so what I do, that's part one, the history. Part two is what I do. I'm, I'm the finance manager. I'm the 501c3 proposer. I, I, do, I do the operations so that the kids can do the work. So that is what comes in, as we just talked about, money is a big issue. Because since this is youth-oriented, and I'm sure all you guys in college know what a budget is now, um, it's very difficult to get funds because, you know, we don't, youth are not inclined to go to the corporate office and say, could you give us some money? Youth are not inclined to be able to write great grants because they're not experienced writers. So there's a number of obstacles that a youth-oriented nonprofit has encountered. As the nonprofit ages, it's going to get better because the kids are getting a little older. They can start writing more. They can start doing more things. But my job has been to follow up with the... Um, everybody that wants a bike, the logistics, and it's, it's a very difficult process, but it's a very rewarding process. Why? Because I get to see youth um, light up. Their eyes light up. 
So it doesn't really matter to me if I'm up to 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning doing things because I know that um, the youth in my community and the youth in Africa that I don't get to see every day are experience a better life because of my small contribution. So the last part of this is talking about South Sudan. Um, keep going, please. Keep going, keep going. By the way, we have over 300 volunteers in one day at the collection sites, which is pretty phenomenal for a one-day operation. But keep going, keep going. That's his grandmother. See, she has her oxygen on. So you never know. Okay, so get to the next, keep going. The ne that, there. Uh, anybody have any idea why I have 6,782 miles on there? <laughs> Distance to? Sudan. Distance to South Sudan, or that's what Google says, so who knows if that's true or not, but that's what Google says. So it's 6,782 miles to South Sudan. We're trying to get our bikes there. If you calculate how many miles um, it's, it costs, I'm give you a math question. We've been challenged today. It's very difficult. We sent 500 bikes. It cost us, right now we've already cost us $13,000 to just ship them to Juba, which is the capital. Twents East is where the Lost Boy is from, which is eight hours north of Twents to eat of Juba, and that's going to cost us five thousand dollars. So we spent eighteen thousand dollars to spend five hundred bikes. So how much did it cost us to send a bike? So what do you think a bike cost in Africa? Any ideas? What would be a cost of a bike in Africa? Okay, it's all around the market, but you need to think. Because the point is, there are, I don't think, I'm not exactly sure, but I don't think there's any bike manufacturers on the African continent. So therefore, bikes are very expensive. The minimum price that we could find was $200. So if you can only envision what an African salary would be, $200 is cost prohibitive. So our bikes hopefully will change a life, especially in South Sudan. Go to the next page. Okay, South Sudan. There's only 17 miles of paved road in South Sudan. So it's going to be very difficult to get these bikes wherever, we, if we're able to get them there. But what we've done is we brought all these people in, and we brought in, go to the next picture, and I'll give you $10, no professors, if any of the youth can identify who this man is. That's your big question. Let's see. Anybody? Oh, who knew that? Are you a student? That you weren't supposed to answer. That's not fair. Okay. Well, this is the Secretary of Education, Arnie Duncan. He happens to live in our community. This is the ambassador to South Sudan. This is my son. And this is Dean Jacques, who is the lost boy. Um, the reason that I brought this picture is because Arnie Duncan plays basketball. The common thread between my son, Dean Jacques, who's a lost boy, and Arnie Duncan was basketball. So uh, I only have a minute. So keep going through the slides as I'm talking. Just keep going through. These, this is our volunteer appreciation event. We, we again invited a lot of people, and Arnie was uh, very nice to come. The ambassador came. We talked about, and you see our little signs. You can tell everything's homemade because we're on a zero budget. So zero budget is tough, but that means that if you support, and oh, that those little girls, hold, 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 those little girls were the future because we have young scout groups. Since my son is a senior now, we have young groups coming in to support the endeavor. This is Arnie and his family. His children help at our collection. The beauty of the project is the older kids help the younger kids, so you have cooperative effort, and you also have intergenerational ties, which are very important. We have old people. The next one is even old people like me or your professors. This is the newest family that we have. We, it's a community-oriented project. We emphasize families coming out and doing it together. This is our latest new family in Bethesda, and they're actually going to Africa, but they collected 110 bikes in their first collection. Um, the next uh, slide is a quote that my son came up with, and I'm not really sure, but whether you're 7 or 70, you can change a life. So I want you all to stand up. Stand up. I know you can. Okay. I want you to take one step to the right. And take one step to the left. Now take one step forward. Okay. 
What you need to know is one single step, one step can change a life. And what I need all of you youth over here to do, and some of you youth over here, is to make a commitment. So get your phones back out. Get your phones back out. Come on, we only got a minute. Get your phones back out. Quit yawning. It's only 11. Get your phones back out. What I want you to do is I want you to go to April 6th, and you have wills to Africa. And what I want you to do is I want you to pledge that on that day, while I'm in Juba, risking my life. By the way, Juba is very dangerous. If you, you go, go on the State Department website for some fun reading. Go on the State Department website and see what it says about Juba, and then you're going to look at this person and say, boy, she is crazy. But, so, I want you to go on your calendar, and I want you to put single step. I know you guys don't like a lot of words. You don't, you're in college, but you just like, so single step, SS. I want you to make a single step to make a change in somebody's life. April 6th, and hopefully I'm going to be in Juba. Okay? All right, I would like to thank... and. Um, these people, and Simi and I have worked together at Lehman, and um, she was very, I was very impressed with her diligence. For you people who are, I'll give you another little, for you youth who are looking toward jobs, one reason I was impressed with her is her diligence. So all of you guys who are trying to get mentors or trying to make your way because jobs are hard to come by, your diligence is noticed. I can guarantee it. Every one of my volunteers that come back every year, I notice. I gave them an award. It's important that you dil you're diligent in everything you do. My last message here is, again, take the single step. And the reason I'm here today is because the bikes were delayed for two weeks already. We don't know what other delays. That's why I said send your positive energy because we need intervention from somebody to make sure that we can get these bikes to this village because this village, this could change. It can keep women from being raped. It can keep people alive so they have food. It can get medicine. These bikes will change a whole village. <laughs> oh, and by the way, if you want to buy a T-shirt, Simi's going to be selling the T-shirts. Um, you can, these are the last year's model, this is this year's model, and when you come to D.C., if you want to walk with us, get on the website. We have an event where you can walk with us or you can participate at the collection. Thank you.